What if you are trying to onboard a new bookkeeping client and everything seems to be going well, but then you get the dreaded feedback, your price is too high. Should you as a bookkeeper change your pricing to fit the client's budget? Or what are your different options at this point? In broad terms, your basic options are either to walk away from that client and decide, no, it's not a good fit, or negotiate to try to make it work for both of you. So I'm gonna dive deep into both of these options, give you some practical tips, and then I will also talk a little bit about when you're first starting out, should you work for free? Should you work for really cheap starting out? And also how much should you be charging as a bookkeeper? So let's start out with those two choices, negotiate or walk away. First, let's just talk about walking away. This one is possibly a little bit more simple because throughout the interview process, it's an interview both ways. Like you are making sure that that client is a good fit for you as well well as they are making sure they want to hire you. So try not to think of it in your mind that they are the one in control. You are just as much in control because you are a contractor, you work for yourself, you get to choose your clients. And I do have a class for bookkeepers that's all about marketing, getting new clients, and how to onboard them, how to do that interview process, what questions to ask, how to explain your pricing, all that stuff. It's called Bookkeeper Marketing Coach and it'll be linked in the description if you're interested. So if someone does say that your prices are too high, I want you to believe that there are going to be other clients that come along who will pay your prices, who will pay your full rate and not try to maybe lowball you. I know it can be easy, especially starting out to have kind of a scarcity mindset, like, oh, this is a one client and I'm never going to get another good client. But as much as you can try to fight that thought and realize, no, there are an abundance of clients out there. I am a good bookkeeper and I'm going to find the right clients. And of course, we all have imposter syndrome at some points. We think uh, I'm not good enough. I actually have a whole video on imposter syndrome. I'll leave that linked in the description box as well if you wanna check that out. So as much as you can, believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, and know that there will be the right client coming in the future. I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you wanna know more about how I got my first three clients, I have a free masterclass about that too. The link for that will be in the description box. The other piece of this walk away strategy is oftentimes, in my experience, the clients who are very price sensitive do not turn out to be the best clients. The best kind of client, of course, is someone that knows your value and isn't too worried about nitpicking every little like dollar. So for this, you're kind of going to have to read them and figure out like, is this someone I really want to work with? Am I really excited about it? Or is it going to be like a headache for me to work with this person? And I'd say in my experience, maybe like 75 ish percent of the people who think you're too expensive are probably not ready for you. They're not going to be a good client. They might be more trouble than they're worth, but now let's talk about that other 25%, those clients that you think are gonna be really great, you're really excited to work with them, so how can you negotiate with them to help them see your value and also get the services that they want to pay for? So in this negotiation portion, I have three different things I want you to think about. One, can you slightly change your services? Two, can you better communicate your benefits? And three, think through the pricing feedback and what that means. So first of all, change your services. So you can communicate to that person, I'm really excited to work with you, I want this to work out, but I'm not able to do it for the price that you need. So let's talk through what are the most essential things you want me to do as a bookkeeper? And then what are some of those extras that maybe we can cut out at least in the beginning of our relationship? So essentially you are doing less things for them. So maybe they wanted you to do like the basic things, which we all know are categorizing, reconciling and sending reports, but maybe they also wanted you to do invoicing and bill pay and receipt management. So the price that you quoted was for all those things, but maybe they realized like, actually, I don't really need a fancy receipt management system. I'm just going to continue to stick them in a filing cabinet in my office and they can cut that out and therefore it will be you know, less work for you and a cheaper price for them. And then you never know, maybe in the future they are going to you know, realize how great you are and want to add in more services or maybe their business will grow and they can you know, have you do a few more tasks. All right, the next thing you can do is clearly communicate the benefits to the client. And this can kind of like be throughout the sales process. Maybe you need to reiterate them and they just need like a little bit of a reminder to pull the trigger on hiring you. But as you're getting to know the client, you probably felt some of their stress. Like you pinpointed some things that they were worried about. So maybe they were worried about paying taxes and having all the things organized for taxes. Maybe they were, they don't just don't have time to log into QuickBooks or they're stressed because they don't feel like they have enough knowledge about QuickBooks. So I want you to pay close attention to their stressors and then tell them what the solution is. And I know sometimes it can be easy to almost get like a little defensive or hurt 
about your prices and be like, no, my prices are normal. Like my prices are justified as much as you can try not to do that. Don't even worry about that, but just talk about it from your client's perspective. Like what value are they going to get by hiring you? How much are they willing to pay for that peace of mind, that wonderful ability to sleep at night and not worry about your books, not worry about your messy finances. It's also worth noting in a kind way that if their books are messed up, if they continue to, you know, be making mistakes along the way for like a year or more, then it's going to cost them a lot more money in the long run to clean up those books, to have someone come in in a year and fix all the little mistakes. So if you can start out now with someone who knows what they're doing, that is going to help out a lot. Maybe you can give them examples of other happy, satisfied clients on your website. You can have testimonials, or maybe you can have references that they're able to call and ask about your work ethic. And in general, people are going to spend money on what they value. So a random personal story that's kind of unrelated to bookkeeping. We recently hired someone to help us out with our yard work. And this was like a big stretch for me because I'm a pretty frugal person. And like, it seemed a little bit unnecessary to pay a landscaping person to mow our lawn, do our, you know, weeds, trim our bushes, all that kind of stuff. So it took me a few years of thinking about this, being stressed about the yard, but it has been one of my favorite decisions of the last year because I spent money on what I value. And what I value in that case was getting my time back because our family was spending spending like half the day on a Saturday cleaning up the yard. Even though I live in the suburbs, our yard upkeep was taking us a really long time and it was taking away from other things we wanted to do. And it was a big stressor in our lives because we're like, oh, our yard looks terrible again. Let's spend another big chunk of our weekend attending to it. So my point is, if you can get your clients to kind of see that big picture, like spending a bit of money is worth it in some cases, if you really value the outcome. And the other part of this showing the benefits thing is really speaking to your clients emotions. I think this is a big part of sales. I'm not like a super accomplished salesperson, but I know that the more you talk to someone's emotions, they're going to listen and that is going to hit home for them. So I made up this little list of five things you can communicate to your clients. Feel free to steal these. You can like use my words exactly if you want, but these are some of the emotions that your client is going to feel if they have a good bookkeeper. All right, so this is how you're going to feel with me as your bookkeeper. You are going to feel productive to have your bookkeeping checked off your list, yay. You're gonna have clarity in your finances. You're gonna be confident that your books are done correctly. You'll feel safe, like safety is a big one for people. They'll feel safe from tax penalties and they will feel glad for business growth opportunity. The business growth is a big one for me. I really do believe that a good bookkeeper is going to help their clients clients grow. And of course it's not hundred percent guarantee. It's much easier to pinpoint issues as well as good things. If you have clear reporting, I really do believe that. All right. And the third piece of this negotiation is more just internally for yourself. So I want you to kind of think about this feedback you're getting and decide what you can do with it. Especially if you're getting the feedback a lot that your price is too high. Like why is that exactly? How are you presenting yourself throughout the sales process? Are you communicating your value as well as you can? Does the client understand like what they're getting when they get a bookkeeper? So think about your sales process. Also ask the client, like, why do you think the price is too high? What price were you expecting? What do you think would be fair? You can also compare that to kind of the market value in your area, as well as the type of business. Maybe you are targeting businesses that have too low of an annual income and you want to start like working with larger businesses. I do have a video I will link below for you. It's about why do you see all these bookkeeping jobs listed for minimum wage? Wage. Like, is there the thought out there that bookkeepers are a minimum wage job? I think no. And in that, I kind of talk about the differences between, you know, working for yourself as a contractor and working for someone as a W-2 employee. And then a little bit about historical reasons that bookkeepers, you know, people sometimes think of them as the lower paying jobs. So definitely check out that video. That's an interesting one. And I go into, you know, again, how you can communicate your value. I feel like I've said that phrase like a bunch of times in this video, but that is really the key. So would I lower my price? as a bookkeeper. Generally, I would say no. I try to be pretty confident in my pricing and know my worth. That being said, would I work for free or a lower amount if it was like my first or second client? For me personally, yes, I would because I almost see that and I did. I've shared this before, but when I first started out, I had two friends that started their businesses. They were like my high school friends and I worked for free for them for like 
it was like almost a year, I think, maybe a little less than a year for one of them. And then I also took one of those like minimum wage jobs working at an office. For all those scenarios, I saw it as training. I saw it as getting paid a little bit and I got a lot of experience. So that is definitely personal preference. I do have a video, I think it's called like all the like 10 reasons to work for free as a bookkeeper starting out. And there's, you know, there's definitely advantages to it. I think it also goes into like networking too and like getting to know people and then word of mouth, that kind of stuff. All right. And how much can you make as a bookkeeper? I have a couple videos about this. Again, I will link for you. But if you want to know the general ballpark, I would say start out charging $50 an hour. And if you don't want to work hourly, that is fine. Then you will need to come up with some kind of pay structure. And I explained this in the video about small, medium, and large clients. But basically, you know, you have three tiers. You have small clients that pay you $250 a month. You have medium clients that pay you $500 a month and large clients that pay you $1,000 a month. And that is kind of like the rough like starting point. And then from there you can add and subtract services. And as I'm doing the work, I kind of roughly like think about how long it's taking me that my time for money rate is good. Maybe you start at more like 30 ish dollars an hour and your prices are a little lower when you're starting out. And then, you know, after you've been doing it like 10 years, you're charging more in the range of $70 an hour. Part of that is that you get faster as you get better, right? So maybe I can do a really small client's books in an hour per month, but the value to them is is $250 a month. So it's kind of like I'm making $250 an hour. That being said, there are probably a few other tasks throughout the year that I'm helping them with. Maybe I'm creating 1099s and that takes me a bunch of time in January. Maybe I am pulling different reports or going to board meetings. So you can see there can be some variations, but overall it is a very good job because you're able, you have high earning potential and really flexible hours. And you don't have that much overhead for your business. You just have a computer basically, and then the cost of QuickBooks. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you would say to a client who thinks your prices are too high.